from both YouTube and Facebook. So you can watch from whatever platform is better for you. Help me do all this is my husband, John. Hello. Hello. He's going to make sure that my green screenness is cut out even live. And then I'm teeny tiny when I need to be so you guys can see the painting as it's constructed. We're going to be painting this beautiful piece tonight right here, which I'm very excited about. We're going to be working on 140 pound watercolor paper. This is cold press. I know um, sometimes there's different conversations about watercolor paper going all the way up to 300 pound. Mm -hmm. But I really think as long as you get into 140 pound, especially as a student, that's a great way to paper because it won't buckle on you so heavily. And this happens to be on something called a block, which also prevents buckling, which I love. I'm going to be using a number eight round watercolor brush. So this is just around, the, you know, about this size in relationship to my finger. This is a black velvet. Sometimes I like to use an Escoda. Really seriously, do you want just a nice brush with a natural hair and a good tip on the round so you can do a lot of painting comfortably? I'm going to be using Nickel Ozzo Yellow, maybe some Hansa Yellow Medium. I've got a little Pyro or, uh, Red Out, a little Ultramarine Blue, a little Thalo Blue, a little Opera Pink, a little Transparent Pyro Orange, in thalo green and we have just a side in case we would like to do something with it a little quinacridone magenta now this watercolor comes from a tube but you could be working from uh, the half pans that's kind of what you think of for Crayola where they're in the little pans and they're dry both are fine they're just really about preference and your style and the types of stuff that you're currently painting and for this type of lesson both are fine you can find the traceable on the website thearchsherpa.com Let's look at him real quick and think about where we're going. Now, I'm going to demonstrate uh, doing him in uh, fairly freehand, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the decisions that I'm making. I like to do this on occasion. That way you guys can see what I'm thinking about when I draw it out. I don't actually normally draw directly on watercolor paper uh, because sometimes you have to change your mind and you don't really want to erase on watercolor paper because it disrupts the surface. And actually, this one I did kind of just with paint free flow, no pencil, but I'll do a little pencil work on this before we go. You guys can use the traceable at home. If you've never used a traceable, just search the Art Sherpa, how to use a traceable, and a little 10-minute video will show up showing you how to do that. It's actually pretty direct, and then when you see it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. John's going to make sure the robotic cameras are, like, looking at what we're doing. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to get my N.W. Root Rear. It's a frosty mug taste. This is not a sponsored video. I just feel like saying that. Refreshing, treat myself to a, the tiniest soda and the tiniest human, little soda, little person, little, little, little. Mm. All right, let's hop on in. It's going to be a good day. Ah, baby Yoda. So this is the last painting that I did on this pad. And when you have a block, it's important to know how to remove your previous project. I like to do it on a block because you can do very wet applications, and if you allow it to dry here, it re-stretches it, so you don't have to use a bunch of other equipment to re-stretch your paper. Who wants to do that? Lots of people, actually. It's kind of fun to do. But you probably don't want to do that right now at this moment. I'm just taking this individual sheet off, and you can see this is now ready to frame or hang or put somewhere in your home. You were going to do that. And Amy says, Amy Ovard, who's here on the live, says that you should change my voice to a little squeaky voice sometime, Don. Oh, I should get one of those little squeaky things and over here. I've got one. I just have it hooked up. Mary Myers goes, it's a root beer float. Well, that would be really good, wouldn't it? If you're coming to the retreat in October, one of the places that we go makes their root beer by hand and they make their ice cream by hand and it's a root beer float. It's mm -hmm. really good. It's the, um, the bathhouse brewery. That's right. And all of it's made from the spring waters. From the spring water underneath the springs bubbling up. This is very cool. All right, let's put this a little bit to the side here, and we'll think a little, we'll think some of his placement. Now, I want to make sure that I've got room up top and on the bottom of my paper. I want room to drip. I want room for framing. I want him placed so that when he's framed, he doesn't, look weird if you put them down or somewhere unusual even when you're using the traceable you really want to think about where is your bunny going to sit so that if you finish this work by framing he looks right because if you put him in a weird corner 
I look like he's a peeking in. That could be great if you intend to do it. Uh, and ha- Patty Hoffman says, Yella, you don't have opera pink. It's an opera pink emergency. Opera pink is a wonderful color. I wish there was more of it in acrylic. It's not a color I see as much as I would like in acrylic. I'm going to begin, I think, today with his nose. Because if I put his nose here, kind of in the center, I really can't get down too far or too high. Okay. I'm going to bring down his little nose. And it's kind of just a little downward V. And you bring this down again just a bit. And we come into the little under bottom of him. Make sure that you remind yourself that there's a little area that kind of comes in. I don't want to do much, too much of this. This is a credit color uh, aquail pencil, which is like a watercolor pencil, but uses a graphite lead instead of a pigment lead. You could use like a Neo 2 or uh, any watercolor pencil that you wanted. Now coming out about, I have his little head up here. Do, do, do. About the midway point across the skull. I'm going to say we have two little eyes sort of sitting off to the side here. And I'm just making little marks to let myself know where I feel like I'm going to sketch something. That kind of helps me think about it. Little eyeball comes out. And we know we're going to have little lashes. Because bunnies have the lashes, don't they? I know a lot about bunnies now because my daughter wants a bunny. And so I have watched. She just doesn't want one bunny. She wants all the bunnies. I've watched all the YouTube videos about bunny care. I know about the bunny care drama going on right now in the bunny care community. I did not. Oh, yeah. There's some big bunny care because they review each other's care. Oh, really? Yes. It's peer-reviewed bunny care. They do peer-reviewed bunny care, and they are they are not a calm about it community. No siree, Bob. You better not own a bunny unless you're ready. <laughs> My daughter will tell you, if a bunny grinds his teeth, it means he's angry. Or if a bunny thumbs his foot, it means he's warning you. And they do a weird little jig. That means they're excited. See, I know all these things, and I'm not going to own a bunny. Hmm. No. <laughs> she does not know that yet, though. She still thinks that somehow she's going to wear me down into a bunny. But she's not. I like bunnies. But as many of you parents know, uh, it's it would be my pet bunny, dad's pet bunny, and that's a that's a big involved pet. The marks you see me making here are just little dashing marks. Just kind of uh, be aware of the shape of his face because these little cheeks that will come out to the side like that, and that's a good way of doing that. Here, I want to mark out that the ear kind of comes over a bit and is open. And I make very light marks. I don't need a lot here. I just kind of need to know where my paint's going to go. When you do your traceable, you want light marks. It's okay to do light marks. I can also just do this freehand in paint, but I don't recommend that unless you're doing it as an exercise to grow your skills or you're feeling very confident in it. If you want to do it as an exercise to grow your skills, that's actually cool. I'm going to bring this up here. The ear should be about the same length. This ear is sort of facing back. And so those are some things that we're seeing in the bunny. Mm -hmm. And then let's come here about mid-place in the jaws and kind of bring down some little bunny chest. Because, you know, if you think about it, we've got a little bunny chest like that. Comes down a little round area. You want the line to kind of come down and back up. And I have drips coming down, so I don't need to really take it much past that little point down here. So the point to the center of the chest, the point to the under of the mouth, up the nose, in, and then the big thing is trying to capture these little eyes with a little roundness going out. It's okay to exaggerate. No one's going to be mad at you. All right. Oh, Moderator Rainbow is like, hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yes, please. Please, it is important to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps YouTube recommend the video to other people. And it also lets me know that you guys are watching, and I like to see your comments. Mm -hmm. Definitely interesting what you have to say, and I do read my comments. I don't necessarily get everyone answered, but I go through and I check all my YouTube channels every day and my Facebook groups and my Twitter and my Instagram. The Twitter. I, I reading, I looking, and I listen. I listen. A lot of times you guys will say things and it will become part of what we're doing. 
Okay, so I've got kind of a little bit of a bunny sketched in. I've got my number eight round here. A lot of the bunny I did into a very wet in wet technique and then also came over with a glaze. Mm -hmm. so it's a mix of both of those things. I'm going to start out kind of maybe creating a purple. So let's get some of our ultramarine blue pulled out from this little spot. And then I'm going to get a little water on my brush and grab some of my opera pink. And this makes a very distinctive purple that we're working. You'll see me adding more water into it and see how it's getting very wet and juicy. That's where mm -hmm. I'm going with it. And I'm going to go ahead and make little hair marks coming out. Under the chin. It's done with a slight purple. It's a light purple. And remember on your watercolor, coming out on the toe of the brush, notice I'm kind of curving that. Yeah. And then also sometimes looking down, trying to kind of mimic fluffy hair. Maybe a little bit stronger here. Where there be more violetness. Not violence, more violets. I can go more into my pink here. And you can see we can come in areas that are already sort of wet. And we play the wet and dry area in this space. So this particular project does some wet into wet, some glazing. When you paint over an area that's already wet, you'll notice that the pigment blends in. And one of the things that you're going to be working on as a beginner is controlling your brush. This is a mm -hmm. good video on brush control. And it also teaches you how the paint behaves differently in areas that are dry and areas that are wet. You get a real direct comparison. So nice to see everybody on Facebook. Thank you oh, for all the stars. What's going on everyone. on the Facebook fam? Oh, Jennifer sent us some stars. Thank you for the stars, Jennifer. Betsy, I wasn't sure why you can't see this on YouTube. You you may uh, I think it may you may be at the Art Sherpa official yeah, instead she, she of how to paint watercolor live. She found it. Huh? Yeah, she found it. Oh, it okay. just was, I was just scrolling up, making sure I didn't miss anything. We're just going to add a little bit here. Leanne says, thank you so much for being you from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you for being up in Melbourne, Australia. As opposed to Melbourne, Louisiana. So we're still trying to figure out our times here right now. Uh, it looked like it was easier for a lot of you guys to show up at this time, but we're going to do like three of them at 6 o'clock, and then we'll probably do a poll again and look at the numbers and see when it's easy for everybody to show up. So the next two lessons are at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Oh, thank you, everyone, for the stars. Whoop. I'm behind on chat. It's a fuzzy bunny. All right. Now I've wet my brush quite a lot. Right. And I'm going to come here and create a drip. I'm adding water to the weight on here. And you can see already it's finding a place to travel. I want to make sure that I have lots and lots of pigment. And I'm trying to find a place to drip. And you want to just keep weighting it. Eventually, gravity and things will start to win out, and you will be able to release the drip down the page. I like to have a little bit of a natural moment in that. So you see me tipping my page up. If I get accidental other drips, that's okay. Just make sure they have enough pigment to register well. Tapping it down, just trying to create a little extra drip personality. And we can also kind of hand paint out a drip here. So you get a little natural one and you can come in and also create a little splashing. See how we make it interesting? So there's the random, accidental, and the intentional that happened there. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. So those things are nice to play with both. I'll come back with a little heavier pink. Make sure that this is well done. And we've got another layer of fur we'll put over the top a bit later, but let's rinse out. How are we doing? Looking pretty good. 
Ooh, Sharon Kennewitz is high, and then she's watching in South Wales, Australia. Oh my goodness, it's Ooh. it's eight twenty a.m. Okay, so this is a good time for Australia. Oh, that's a good time for comparatively to another time, which that's is like at three in the morning, which is not a good time. Hello, John from Holland. I'm from Holland. Hi. How is everybody doing around the world? I hope you guys are staying safe. John has extra consonants together that are J's and K's, and I can't pronounce those. Lula Hall is such a sweetheart. She says uh, she is in South Wales, UK, and it's 2321 here. So I have no idea what time it is. Where it's the 24-hour clock. I have to say, I'm impressed by John's name. His last name begins with a Z and has multiple JK combinations in it. That's a that's IJ. a that's an event, right? Now let's I, take. I'm going to take out. A, sorry, it's a. I'm just impressed by his cool name. I'm impressed by his cool name. Why did I get started on the painting? again? sometimes I sorry. do that. We're like visiting, and then I'm like, must continue okay. painting. Okay. It's the weirdest thing. I'll be like, social painting, social painting. I'm okay. taking phthalo blue and phthalo green. And I'm mixing them together, and that's going to give me a really nice choice. Sheila from Tasmania. Hello. Oh, my gosh. I just finished the gloaming, which was filmed in Tasmania, and <laughs> how pretty. It was like kind of a murder mystery, so that part was like not pretty. But there's just some countryside, and I was like, this is amazing. I need to go there. Oh, Edith says the J is silent. The J is silent. Let's take a little of this very... Let's make it super light, you guys. We want it to be a very light blue. We want it to lighten up as we go. Under the nose here. And come out a little bit with this blue. Good idea. Pull the little, the little blue with a bit of your... Like to get control over here. Pretty wet, pretty light. So how you lighten your paint on your brush when you're painting with watercolors, you have more water and less of the pigment. If you want to darken it, you add more pigment and have less of the water. Fun. I love this button. So I'm just making little brush strokes curving out. I let the toe of the brush create the hair. That can take a little bit of practice, but if you practice, you will get there. You will, you will. I'm going to grab a little bit of my nickel ozzo yellow and let it mix into my uh, little turquoise color here and kind of blend now. Kind of coming up over the eye and around here. So that's how we're kind of pulling a little bit of that green value into it. See how we're doing? Do a similar thing over here because he's a bit of a rainbow bunny. A bit of a, a pastel rainbow bunny. He's a very, very, very pastel -y bunny. I'm waiting for the ears, I think. Are you? Is yeah. that what you're excited about? You're personally excited about the ears? Yeah. It'll... He's like, personally, it's about the ears for me. Now I'm going to get a little of this yellow, this bright, bright yellow. This is the Hansi Yellow Medium. If you were painting on Crayola, you would just want to find your sunniest, brightest yellow. And come here in the middle a bit and let this all blend in some. You can see some of what's nice here is that when the paint it's attached to is a little wet, there's a natural, lovely blooming that happens. I'm going to grab my, I think my ultramarine blue and phthalo blue together. I do this mix a lot on my acrylic channel, one of my favorite colors, and make a very light nose color in that blue and let it do its kind of blending, blooming here now. And then we'll come back. I'm going to come back with the green and make some little definition. I'm going to grab some of my purple. Well designed under the nice space. That's fun to do. 
And I may need to come back with my turquoise right here under the nose and make sure that that's a nice, kind of well thought out painted area. If I have lines like that that I'm not ready for, I just come back with water. Mm -hmm. And I can soften that. Amy Ovard says, and I love this, gasp. Oh my, oh my, oh my, I'm going to do my bunny and neon paints. I am so happy. I hope I, I hope I captured that. I felt like I really channeled Amy there. We've been painting uh, online for a while, so I feel like I know some of my community. It's, yes. Now I'm going to wet the inside of this ear with my brush. I'm going to pre-wet this whole area because I want to do an interesting little blend. I'm going to grab, let's get our nickel ozo yellow. It's a very bright, warm yellow, a little different than the Hansa. As you can see, and pull that in to that segment of the ear. You could mm. just use the Hansa. Use the Hansa. Feel that different to you. I'm going to grab my opera pink and my transparent pyro orange together. You know I love that color. I know. You painted the Baby Yoda with me. Either one of them, the one here on this channel with the little face or the patron one, you know I like me. Mm hmm. I'm going to combo those two colors and I'm going to blend them in here together. Let's come on the outside a bit with that as well. Find a little bit of the ear. We shape a lot of this with a glazing paint later, but doing the soft paint now can make a big difference. This one I'm going to just paint in. And then, just to be sure, I'll come through here with the yellow now. Let that do its thing. Because I know I'm going to be glazy, glazy. Yeah. And how we're doing? Super glazy. So I feel like he's a little lopsided over here, and I'll have to even him out. Let's see. Oh, his little cheeky? His little cheekies are a little bit. His little, now, he little could just be off. chewing some carrots. That could be happening. But I'm going to want to make sure that I even out his little lifters. Mm. Lifters. For sure, for sure, for sure. I can how you guys that. doing? There, this is, <sighs> this is a pretty exciting one. Uh, bunny. So Amethyst asked a question about my paints. What kinds of watercolors are you using? I thought it was uh, 30, uh, uh, in the 30 munitions reminder till I, I look. Okay. <laughs> so what I try to do. I got a good one for you when you're ready. Oh, okay. What I try to do is use a variety of brands that you guys have access to. And I do that for two reasons. Um, it's so that you know that while... The quality of paint is important, not always the brand of a paint is important. And I want you to feel free if you see something in a Daniel Smith line, to grab a Daniel Smith. If you see something in a Core line, to grab a Core. If you see something over in Da Vinci, you grab a Da Vinci. If you see Senelier, you pick a good line, and there's lots of good lines, and some, you know, and they go across budgets, but it's just about being flexible and finding the pigment and color that you like. Mm -hmm. I'm working from tubes because it's just really convenient, and... To make it easy for you guys, if you want to paint with me every week or more than weekly sometimes, I'm using these colors for the year. So once you get the complete color list, that's I'm not going to vary. That's I'm it. not going to deviate. It's not that I couldn't, but that will let you collect the palette and so you can do projects with me easily. And that is then the weight of your expense and you're not having to worry about constant ongoing buying. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I've got a good one here for you. All right. So let's see here. If you go back up, and this is Ruby. Ruby Ann says, mm -hmm. so this is the first time I've been, I've seen a watercolor uh, step by step. Because I always, oh, lots of comments. Let me scroll back up. Mm. Because I always watch your acrylic step by step classes, you've taught me more in four months than I did in two semesters of college uh, and acrylic classes. And I'm truly grateful for finding you. Thank you very, very much. I'm so glad to hear that. And you know what's great is when you get these core skills and then you kind of put those into the concepts. Because sometimes in college courses, right, they give you concepts, these core concepts. Mm -hmm. but they don't want to, like, damage your internal and self-directed growth, right? They're, they're very sometimes it's off. And so you're like, uh, I just I just need to know how to do this, this technique or I need to know how to do that. And they're more like in the concepts of art or those things. Sometimes, not always. There Sometimes. are some schools that are so core. Like they're like, dissect this horse and draw it by layer, which I couldn't, I could so, not do that. Like, there was no danger of me going to that school. Like cottage core? Cottage core. 
Artcore. <laughs> Artcore. Artcore. Which is a little scarier once you get to know it. <laughs> it's all over. It's like, whoa, you artists. I now, thought the math department was intense. But, normally. Hey. <laughs> no, art department is, first of all, let's, if you don't know about an art degree and you're thinking about going into the world of art and getting an art degree. It can be as hard to get as any math or uh, medical degree. Um, so if you're if you're going in thinking, oh, it'll be like a sail through. No, they do they do a lot of stuff to you. It's very expensive the materials and books and requirements. So it's not necessarily less expensive. You're going to be required to take in a lot of information. Um, you, you get a lot of art, like well, a lot of history, like a lot mm -hmm. of juicy history. That part's really good, and you learn how That's to fun. see how things that influence each other things like across time how we visually communicate and sort of a core visual language it does teach you a lot of stuff about thinking there are weird moments artists are very intense there will be somebody freaking out once a semester like wholesale oh yeah <laughs> like totally like that's it there that's their last day i mean they're going to come back and they're going to be okay but there's like there's these like moments. It's it's definitely like an ebb and flow, and they they ask a lot of you emotionally and mentally. Um, so when people are like, "Oh, I'm going to get an art degree. It's going to be easy." I'm like, "Fun with that." I'm so it's glad fun. you think I'm, so. I'm not sorry. I'm not at all sorry. I loved every minute of it, but it wasn't something that was just you know maybe what you imagined. That's the mm. thought that I have. I highly recommend it though if you can do that. But if you want to self train at home, know that there are many many great artists that are self-taught and self-trained and they are oh, yeah. completely satisfied Maybe. and successful in their art lives. And so it's just what's right for you. I got on a soapbox, didn't I? You did. You boxed. Tammy Edwardson says, is there such a thing as enough art supplies? Mm. Not as far as I'm aware, I but I may have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> may have? Mm, I might. I don't want to run my hair dryer on here because I don't want to move these drops. And if I run my hair dryer, these drops are going to go different directions, and I really like where they are. Mm, okay. um, the other reason I might not run a hair dryer on a watercolor is because as the pigment settles into the paper, it actually continues to evolve and change. It, light, it lightens a little bit. It also disperses and softens and blends together. So you, you need to let it settle for a minute, if that makes sense. It does. I have watched it settled before. Sometimes I will for the purposes of the class or to speed something along, but I really don't want to here because I'm super happy with that. So <laughs> I'm going to work my way around it. No. Oh, but even when you do that, sometimes you blow stuff around with using your straw, don't you? Yeah, I really do. I'm going to paint in his eye, and I'm going to start with Maybe just pre-wetting it. I'm going to get a fairly heavily, heavy load of, like, phthalo blue, like you do. I'm going to come around the outside edge. Wiping off on my paper towel, and I'm going to make sure that I lift some of the paint towards the back of the eye. Can you see me doing that? Yeah. All right. And that's going to give me a darker area up front, and I'm lifting some of the paint towards the back of the eye. I can then come back with it just a little bit, not quite as wet, with darker pigment, again, in the corner. And this is going to do all that stuff I was talking about, continuing to soften, evolve. Mm. So this is how you sometimes get those really subtle uh, watercolor effects that might seem hard to know how they came into being. I'm taking a damp, clean brush and just moving this where I want it to be, how I want it to be. You have a lot more control in watercolor than you might think. I've noticed that. I thought you could do a lot more with watercolor than I expected. Yeah, and we have really, honestly, the channel is very new. This watercolor... We've done several watercolor videos, but this channel, this, this space where we're doing what we do here, it's is, very new. So we've just begun. You've we've just started. We've just begun. I don't, I don't so I, many I sing, things. but I don't sing, if that makes sense. You sing. I sing, just but I don't. Just not content, content ID sing. <laughs> yeah, content ID will never, will never give me any grief. <laughs> it's like... You haven't violated anyone's copyright. You do you is what Content ID says to me. You got this. It's okay. So once an art post got flagged as misinformation <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, I was like, I'm pretty sure what I said is true. 
These are complementary colors. I did not. I did not know that Facebook had gotten into the art biz the way that I think it just. I don't know. Some keyword made it think it was a different kind of post than it was, but it was just really funny. Like trying to process that you have been uh, a flag for uh, disinformation, and another YouTuber I know, like they froze her whole account. I remember that was crazy. She never says anything but art things, and cocktail things, and whippet things. It's true. That's it. It's very, I like her feed. It's very consistent. So it's real strange. You can see she's got a video about the really crazy thing that happened. So if ever your post gets deleted somewhere, it might not be the group moderator. Sometimes mm. Facebook flag, that cookie post is somehow offensive. I don't know how, but I eat it. <laughs> Watch your cookie. It's true. It's true. That. It's machine learning. Let's add a you little more wonder, dimensionality. What is it learning? Hmm? What is it learning? Uh, just... Probably how to overthrow humanity is like, I'm definitely in the Elon Musk, like I'm watching the AI. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what? What? I'm, I'm in the devs concern. Like, if you watch devs, I'm worried about that nonsense. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little of my opera pink and my transparent pyro orange again. I'm going to go a little more orange. On this, but I just like the mix of those two. I'm I like the ears, the ears I'm here. Oh, sorry, I'm going to come right here to the ears. I see it. I should have said something. Ahead. That's all right. I've I got saw, a, I saw you go in there. You saw me? You saw me. I have cameras. Norman is going to Hawaii. Norman the gnome is going to Hawaii, John. Oh, my. I'm so jealous I, of Norman. But happy over here. Norman, I had, I had Norman the, the deserves chat. to go. Let's come here to the ear. I'm on the toe of the brush. This is the toe of a brush. Great color blend. Your watercolor paint is held in the belly. So we're going to come on the toe. We're not going to press down very hard because if we press down hard, it's going to release a lot more paint. You want to keep that brush pressure where it connects to the paper quite light. And we're going to create something that's called an implied line. I'm not drawing a straight line, but I'm making a line with these marks, these little hair marks. See how we made a little implied line up the mm -hmm. little bunnies? And let's add some little hairs. It could happen. I like this. This is very relaxing. It's very relaxing to watch. Very relaxing to watch. We're going to be doing some watercolor in our art retreat. Sure. Ooh, I you know I look forward to that a lot. Not all watercolor, but some watercolor. Cause why wouldn't we? I'm going to grab a little more pink as I come up. Cause it's fun. Yeah, I really feel like it is. And also, I can't fly without it. I have to do <laughs> watercolors on the plane or it's going to be bad for everyone involved. But he's looking pretty good there. And get a little more. Let me come out, out this side. Now, I feel like there's another layer of the yellow and orange. So I'm going to grab my, uh, my nickel ozo and come over the top. And you can see it's definitely another layer. Mm-hmm. Coming out this way, and uh, de defining and designing, I'll come around the eye. And this is glazing and working wet into wet, so that's kind of nice. Get a little of my transparent pyro orange on the brush. Now, it's, is 6 p.m. your regular time here from now on? I'm thinking, because uh, for what we've noticed is on watercolor, more people can show up in the evening, both on Facebook and YouTube. Huh. So that was the number. That was um, the number. If we will probably do a class on occasion on another day, there's a different time for those that can't make this time. Okay. For live. That way everybody gets a chance to do a live and we'll, we haven't figured out the full multiple day schedule on this. Right now we're still just on Wednesdays sometimes. You see how that's nice blendy blending on I his little forehead? I do see the blendy blendy. Let's get a little green and this is going to be fun and let's get a little of the uh, nickel also yellow together and you see it makes a very bright green. Yeah. It's fun to do this way. And come over here and I don't mind if it gets up into the orange a little bit. That's okay. I'll come around and sort of tap out a little, a little dimensionality right oh, there. Oh yeah, the little eyes mm -hmm. shading. I'm getting to my Hansa yellow. Those are the bunny wisdom the bunny wisdoms. Now, right here, we're going to do a thing where we come in with a little green, aren't we? And make a little bit of an inner bunny. His inner bunny. <laughs> I 
Now I can get into my turquoise there. If I need to grab some yellow, I can. I'm, I'm kind of dancing around a bit in the color here because I want some differences. Yeah. Those that's subtle big. differences are... Now that's They're big. I'll that's, grab some yellow. I know that like on acrylic paint, um, you tend to bring that paint all over the place, but doesn't it get kind of more muddied here? Well, I, I, I would say watercolor goes muddied when you worry the paper. Worry the paper? So you have a layer of pigment, and if you keep coming at it and coming at it with a new color, eventually you're going to create a hidden primary, and it's going to go gray. Oh. Right? That's whenever you mix red, yellow, and blue together, you get a brown or a gray. Yeah. And so if I, uh, and watercolor is always reactivatable, so if I paint over dry watercolor with wet, it is going to lift back up and begin to engage the paint on top. When I glaze over it, Oh, okay. I'm I didn't know looking. you were giving me like, when I glaze over it, I'm still sort of activating what's underneath. If I kept doing that and kept doing that with different colors, eventually I'm going to get a hidden primary in there. It's going to go muddy. It's going to stop being light and vibrant. There it's is a sort be. of like sweet spot with watercolor that you've got to go, all right, I'm ready to, I'm ready to let go. This is it. This is it. I'm good. Let's uh, kind of come here and I'll go ahead and make sure that I, Add some of this little green here. Notice that I'm leaving that little patch area. Yeah, the little patch on his nose. To be a little blue. It's important to come out the side and work that as well. I like that very much. Just kind of leave that an interesting space that we have. Yeah. We can have an interesting space. Yeah. Think about that a bit and imply some of that happening. A little structure in his little face. Always fun. Got some nice eyes going there. Let's put mm -hmm. some more little fur in. We're really actually kind of wrapping up. So it's coming really close. I'm going to get a little of my uh, opera pink and my phthalo blue, and I'm going to get more of a dusty purple over a bright purple. You see that? And that's because the turquoise in there oh. kind of does a little bit of a toning, and I will definitely... Makes a little bit of a shadow. Yeah. Add some little, little more thoughtful little hairs through that space. Mm -hmm. Come more into the pink as I go. That's okay. So you need to get more water to activate it up. And I'm clicking the brush. That helps to find these little hairs, doesn't it? I'm going to go back up to the top of his head for just a second. All right. And make sure that some of this has a little detailing there. That's sort of fun. I can't wait till we get to the splashy, splashy part of him. Hmm. Splashy, splashy is the most fun. It is the most. The most fun. I'm going to get... Some phthalo blue and even a little ultramarine. Let's mix them together and come underneath his nose a bit. Oh, that that adds a nice little lining to it. And a little bit of a chin there, isn't it? A little bit down here into the fur. So we've got his little his little chin. I'm strong with the blue. I'll come up over the lid. Back on the eyeball there. Not the back side, just those sides up first. And then just very, very, just so lightly on the back side, guys. Oh, yeah. And then let's flick out a few little bunny lashes. Oh. Got the mix of bunny lashes. Yeah. I like those little lashes. And on this, and then on the underside, just a smidge on the outside edge, because you're just trying to show it off. Little bunny lashes. Yeah. A little bit of bunny lashes. 
I can always come back with a darker color and make sure that the front of the eye has a little of that going on. See how that creates a little personality there? It does. Now, the splashers. Mm -hmm. Splashers are fun. Let's begin with some pink. It's a very wet brush. I'm swirling it around in the pink. I'm going to take my finger above the brush, and I'm going to tap it. Tap, 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 tap. And that's going to allow the paint to splash in a somewhat controlled, somewhat controlled, <laughs> somewhat controlled, somewhat controlled way. The brush has got to be a little bit wet because it's got to be, you know, juicy enough the paint to splash. Yeah. That was kind of fun. It was very fun. Yeah. Got to have more colors than that, though. So let's get some yellow really on there. You can splash with both hands. You can be an ambidextrous splasher. That's okay. Multi-splash. Multi-splash. Yes, it's a little messy. And I know that sometimes I might grab a little quinacrid on here. Just to give it some of that dark Ooh. pink. Even though we didn't use it, I'm going to get it. And I'm going to get some of my ultramarine blue. That's pretty, pretty exciting. You decide yeah. when he looks right to you. You decide. I like it. You decide what's right. And then you really got to let that dry before you do anything with him. Why do we do splashes? Because it's playful. It creates a playful energy to the piece. Every line, every mark that we make creates energy or space within any painting. You can be a brand new painter. That's true for you. You can be the <laughs> most experienced painter on earth. It's true for them as well. So there's a handful of things. Uh, and Nikki Martin, she says the bunny is adorable. I'm Ian, sign. Ian says, sure, but don't over Ewok it. <laughs> I Ewok all the walks. It's just fun. It's just fun. Just be playful. You know? I will leave this on my pad to dry, hmm. as I mentioned before. And you can see, I, I don't know if I can show you without spilling paint, but I do want to show you that there's just a bit of a little buckling. little buckle. Oh, there it is. You see that buckle? Yeah. There won't be any buckle the next time we meet up for next week's painting. I will show you this painting after it's dried on the pad, and you will see that it will re-flatten out. If I try to dry this loose leaf, it can dry with those buckles in it. So it's like stretching. When you stretch a canvas, Okay, mm -hmm. and you get it all stretched. If you miss the back of the canvas, the drum will stretch and tighten, and it will make that beautiful thumb thumb. It's kind of a similar process here, where as it dries, the pressure from here and here being equal and uniform around the piece allows the paper to dry. If you were doing, say, a 300-pound sheet of watercolor paper, you would pre-wet that and pre-stretch that and allow it to dry on a stretching board for the very same reason. But this just lets me kind of skip that step, and it makes it a little bit easier for you guys as a beginner to enjoy the painting process. Yes. You know, as you want. You can paint this as many ways as you want. You can change up the colors to any of your favorite colors. He could be, uh, he could be a patriotic bunny. He could be um, a red and black bunny. He could be brown bunny. He could be any colors that you like. He could be the colors of my shirt. He could be all blue bunny. He could be blue bunny. I like blue bunny ice cream. Just whatever your favorite colors are. So you could make this for a person in your life and customize it a lot. Mm -hmm. I can put my little signature there. It's nice to sign in a way that you can still have room to frame it. Remember, in with watercolor paper, you tend to frame and put it behind glass to protect it. Yes, there's varnishes now. But really, it's still best just to store your watercolors in a portfolio if you're not going to hang them. Or go ahead and put them behind glass and put them up in your wall so you can enjoy them today. And you can get all kinds of framing options that are custom and ready to go for you at uh, stores like Michael. So yeah. 
pretty chill. Joanne, stuff like that. There's there are options there. And a nine by twelve is a regular size. So it'll fit in the fit in the frames with the free cut mat. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, thinking. <laughs> Think about these things for your end result. Next week. I think we're either painting trees or an apple, but I don't have the calendar. Or an apple tree. Well, it's a branch with a realistic, I think we're going to do a realistic apple painting, and then I've got a very loose how to do pine trees with. So, so I'm you're going to do a branch I'm doing and some an apple. tips. There's some tree tips on it between the two channels, and so you, this will be your tree painting. So apple or trees. One of those is coming, but that's what's <laughs> happening at the end of the month. They're, they're scheduled up. You can find the video. It's scheduled in the live, upcoming live streams. So if you hit the subscribe button and you go find that video and you hit the remind button, YouTube will tell you. And if you want me to tell you, come by and sign up for the website. You can see our calendar and it has all of the classes coming up in it. Or you can come into the Facebook group and I often make events and things to let you guys know when something's happening. And remember, if you are a patron, if you are in Emoji Club, or if you go to the events uh, in my Facebook group, you can get a reference photo. Patreon, Patreon, or free. That's how you do it, though. That's how. <laughs> be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you around a watercolor pad real soon. Bye-bye.